Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Dennis, this is Rob, and we are R&D Outdoors. R&D, so today we're gonna go ahead and teach you guys how we like to rig our kayaks to go offshore. Now there's no way, um, this doesn't mean you have to do it our way, but this is how we do it. So we're just gonna show you our kayaks are fully rigged. Just figured we'd make this video real quick. Yeah, just a little walk through, through uh, safety equipment, fishing equipment, accessories and all that good stuff. So stay tuned, hope you guys learn. Okay guys, so let's start with the kayak. The kayak is like the most important part to go offshore. You can go out there with any kayak you want. We personally like Old Town. So I'm gonna show you why we choose Old Town and use this to look at your own kayak if you wanna get a different brand. The reason why we like the Old Towns is because, first of all, the PDL has a nice V-shaped hole and a nice keel, a nice pronounced keel that is able to cut through waves, especially through the surf when you're launching and if you catch any nasty weather. South Florida is super random over here. It could be nice and calm uh, right now and then like five minutes later, it could be like a nasty storm coming in. So that's very important. Another thing that we like about this kayak is the pedal drive system. It's super easy to deploy, which is important when you have webs coming in or if you're fighting a fish and you need to remove the, the pedal drive really quick so nothing gets on the way of your line. So that's one of the few things that we like to look in our kayaks. That's super simple. The whole shape, reliability and dependability. Also, this kayak doesn't take any water in through the front hatch and that's a huge thing to look for when you're going offshore because if you got waves coming in and your kayak starts taking in water, you could sink. Also something to keep in mind is the rudder in a kayak. So uh, you want a rudder that is easy to deploy, that it won't catch any sand when you're launching. That's another thing. Some kayaks have internal rudders inside the kayak and when you're dragging it, unfortunately you don't realize it, you catch a little sand and that can create the rudder to break the steering system and all that stuff so these kayaks have an excellent rudder system super reliable and easy to use and if actually if you want to fix it yourself it's super easy to fix yourself too that's another thing with other kayaks also some other brands have rudders that are designed mainly for lakes this kayak was made for big water so the rudder actually goes pretty deep down you know, pretty far away from the, the end of the hole and that will allow you to turn faster and better. Alright guys, so South Florida is home to some of the best fishing in the world. And we are able to access it via kayak because the shelf the drop off is so close to shore uh, in the southeast. That being said, because you can get out there on a kayak, it is very important to be safe uh, in case something goes wrong. So number one, VHF radio. Uh, this will help you stay in touch with uh, maybe your friends around you or the Coast Guard and be able to uh, get updates on weather. Second is very important, uh, good life jacket. You want to be wearing this at all times because you never know what can happen. Uh, maybe your kayak is sinking, you don't know it. It can happen really quick. Trust me, I know I've seen it. It's crazy. Also, a whistle uh, to help uh, alert other boats or other people around you. Maybe that you need help. It's uh, maybe your radio goes down. This is. Uh, 
a very important, important fundamental tool to have on the water. Because it can be heard better than, than screaming. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll travel for miles where your scream might not, maybe you won't have the, the ability to scream either. So it's, uh, it's very important to have a whistle. And uh, last but not least, if you have the money, this is a, the, one of the best investments you can have is get an EPIRB. Um, because you're in a kayak, uh, you're powering it usually with your, your own body, either paddling or pedaling with your feet. And we are not too fast, you know? I mean, how long can you hold four miles per hour, you know, in, in drastic situations, dramatic situations? Um, sometimes you can't, sometimes you're injured, maybe someone's bleeding out. You will need help immediately, as soon as possible. Could, uh, could be life or death, so it's very important. You can keep all these safety equipments, maybe like a first aid kit as well, inside of a nice dry bag. Uh, good dry bag, make sure it's not uh, punctured. You wanna roll it and squeeze it so make sure you don't have a, a, an air leak that'll get your important stuff wet. Having a nice visible light that you can turn on, a, a nice white light, this is from Yakutek, the high-vis carbon pole. Um, I put a Florida flag because I'm from Florida, but this is something that uh, boaters, <laughs> this is something that boaters can see you easily with, even in the dark. All right guys, in addition to the VHF radio, your life jacket, your whistle, and a possible e -perp, this right here will save you from losing your kayak in very deep water. It's a good old manual bilge pump. Um, this has saved countless amounts of people while sinking in their kayak. So something to keep in mind, pick yourself up a nice manual bilge pump. Right, that brings us over to the next part. Uh, we're gonna talk about fishing gear. What I'd recommend, if you're just, just the basics, okay, just starting with the basics, if you don't really know too many technical things, I would recommend the following. Number one, bait rod. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, nothing expensive. This is gonna be a light setup where you can throw some very light line. This is actually eight pound test. Uh, monofilament and what we tie on here is uh, pretty much white crappie jig believe it or not it catches a lot of bait and when you fish offshore let's say if you're catching bait for yourself you may need like three or four baits max a day it's hard to accommodate more than that the second rod that we're gonna talk about is maybe like a medium spinning rod uh, something you can pitch a quick bait to throw like a stick bait um, or maybe even tie on a jig and vertical jig with this rod. This is a very versatile setup. The medium spinning rod can be used for a lot of things. This is a go-to. And the third rod in the setup will be utilizing your bait rod. Uh, this is what we throw our live bait on. Usually we recommend using a conventional rod. You can adjust the drag very specifically to accommodate the, the, the pull of a live bait as well as a strong clicker so you know when the bite is on. We rig stinger rigs usually on here. Uh, we put 25 pound monofilament, top shot with a backing of braid. And uh, I mean, this doesn't have to be that serious, that expensive. This is pretty expensive right here. It does not have to be expensive, especially when starting out because you will go through gear because of the salt. Kayak fishing is very, very hard on your gear. That being said, uh, have everything leashed with some good leashes. Shout out, Shout out Pro Yacker. Pro Yacker leashes as well as gaps. 
Now, those are three rods that we recommend every kayak to have. Then you can start getting into more specific jigging styles. Uh, we'll talk more on that later in a separate video, but having a jigging rod on a kayak while you have your live bait flatlining out is very, very useful. You're utilizing the, your time on the water to the fullest extent. Coming over to the front of the kayak, I have a fish bag. Okay, you can mount your fish bag either to the front of the kayak or you can mount it, put it in the tank well if you have no, uh, if you have your storage. Right here I have a huge bait well that I made recently. Uh, however, Rob likes to rig his kayak with the fish bag in the back of the tank well. And the reason he's able to put stuff in the tank, in the rear tank well, is because he uses a bait tube. Now a bait tube can be less drag in the water than weight in your kayak. That's kind of the whole mentality of it. However, you will not be able to fit as many baits in this as you are in a, uh, a bigger live well. Last but not least, we have our gaffs. These are our tools to finish the fight. It is really important uh, to be comfortable using them. And uh, that requires some dependability. You don't want these, uh, these gaffs to be flimsy. You want them to be durable. I carry both gaffs personally because uh, depending on the situation, depending on the behavior and species of fish, you might want to go in with the cage gaff and spear it in the head, which, you know, if it's a big fish, I'll probably use that and then I'll come around and use the hook gaff, get it in the head and secure my catch. Get ready. So the next point guys is accessories. Accessories are very important in a kayak. Uh, a lot of people used to do them DIY, but now we got awesome companies that make them for us. So uh, I like to use Jack Attack. We like to use Jack Attack. Uh, in the front of the kayak, I like to keep one rod holder. I took out the extension arm, so it stays low profile. And this rod holder is actually pretty good for a lot of things. You can do trolling. You can have a rod in standby here just in case you know, like just like a pitch rod or something. Uh, you can use it for trolling for bait. You can use it for troll light bait. This rod holder right here is super, super sturdy, and it fits every kind of rod, even fly rods. So you can use conventionals like this one, uh, spinner, spinning uh, rods, and you can also use fly fishing rods. You know, maybe if you want to take your fly fishing rod out there offshore, who knows? Uh, I like to, uh, right now I only have two row holders, but I like to have four row holders back here. And it's just because I, we bring a lot of rods, right? And we want to keep them out of the way. These row holders are pretty awesome because it allows you to keep this area empty. At least for myself, I like to keep it empty because I carry my fish bag, Pro Yacker fish bag right here. And I also like to put like my camera equipment in here, okay? Uh, so let's just talk about some of the stuff that you might want to bring offshore. So, Dennis already showed you the bait bucket. These zip ties are light bait zip ties, but it brings me to our next point. Zip ties, the regular ones, are a good thing to bring all the time because you just never know when you're gonna use them. A little bit of duct tape too, in case you have to patch something. Uh, what else? A knife, you know, to cut bait, cut line. You just never know when you're gonna need these things. Obviously pliers. I mean, everybody should have pliers in their kayaks, even though sometimes I don't have one. And split rim pliers. Uh, split rim pliers too. That way you can uh, change hooks, fix stuff. You know, these ones are pretty awesome by Vance Lures. And uh, they cut wire perfectly. They cut nylon, they cut braid. Pretty awesome pliers. But any type of plier will work. Some protection, you know, uh, spray, uh, cream, clothing, anything that will help you because the sun in South Florida is brutal. You know, like during the summertime, we have like over 90 degrees in temperature out there and the sun is just gonna kill your skin. So stay protected out there, guys. Another thing to bring could be a rope, just in case, let's say you're going with somebody that never been out there before and they're tired and they can't 
pedal or paddle anymore. You can attach this to your kayak and to their kayak and tow them. Maybe their pedal drive broke, maybe they lost their paddle. It happened to me before, so you just never know, guys. A rope, something that you always need. All right, last but no least, if you want, if you guys want to uh, capture your experience, the best way possible is with two cameras. We like to use one camera mount in the front, usually like a short one that we can move around really quick. And then we like to use like a boomstick for the back. Uh, we usually just stick it in the back row holder and adjust it to face the front. And that way you have both angles, the front one and the back one, just in case you get a fish jumping in the front or if you get your bait in the back or something, you get both angles and you're good to go. All right, guys, this brings us to the last part of this video. Fish finders and GPSs. Um, it's really, really important to have some knowledge of where you are in the water. Now, I'm not gonna say you won't go out there and get lucky, okay? Because you can go out there and just start jigging or, or live baiting and you will catch fish if you have a general idea. However, for example, the first time I've ever bit, been out on an offshore trip in my old kayak, I had no idea where I was in the water. And after paddling for what seemed like hours, I was not even past like 40, 50 feet, okay? So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. This is why we're making this video. I think it's really, really beneficial to have a fish finder. Now, if you don't, if you can't afford a fish finder, you don't want to spend the money on one, what you can do is you can download Navionics on your phone. Yeah, you're and on. it is $10, okay? We're not sponsored by Navionics. <laughs> However, that one application can give you the next step, the next level that you need to, to find the ledge, to find wrecks, everything. So that's something to keep in mind. Having your bait in the right spot at the right time is more important than just free, just throwing it out there whenever. It will definitely make a difference on the water. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you, you took something away from it, learned something. Uh, if you have any tips down below that you wanna kind of give the community as well, maybe we can make a video out of it. Leave a comment below. If you have any questions, we'll be answering all questions in the comments. Yeah, and add us on Instagram too. We wanna leave our Instagram stuff in there. We're actually pretty, uh, how you say, active in social media and stuff. So if you guys wanna connect and just talk about kayak fishing, if you have any specific questions, just hit us up. Um, we'll answer you for you guys. Now remember the safety, we just want to say one more time, you're not having fun out of the water when you're constantly worried and like stressing about safety. So get used to your kayak, whatever kayak you may have, get out on the water, out in lakes, out in calm environments and really learn the kayak. Don't just go offshore first time and just expect to be okay. Um, I did that, in Virginia. You did? Yeah, first time out in my kayak. Don't do it. Three miles out, horrible weather, <laughs> winter time. Yes. Okay, don't do what Rob did. Yeah, um, that being it. said, uh, see you on the next video. Take care, R&D out. All right guys, that brings us to the end of the video. We hope you learned something, we hope you enjoyed. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you would have done something differently, if you have any other questions about accessories, fishing gear, safety equipment, anything that we talked about today leave it in the comments add us on instagram we're gonna put the stuff down here somewhere here somewhere in this general area uh we're actually pretty active in social media so hit us up we'll answer any questions and hope to see you next video rd outdoors out out all right guys well that brings us to the end of the video we hope you enjoyed yeah let us know in the comments if you guys like the tips that we just gave you just the tips Okay guys, I hope you guys learned so much about offshore kayak fishing. All the accessories are here. You know what to do. Get out there and get some fish. Peace out. I'm, I'm, I'm just practicing my YouTube skills, man. That's it. <laughs>